So the first thing we got to do is we take the derivative because, of course, we're dealing with the tangent. And tangent always tells us derivative. So now that I have that, I'm looking to see where the derivative, well, actually, where the tangent is horizontal. Therefore, where the derivative equals 0. So I do 0 equals 2ax plus b. And then we solve that equation. We're solving it for x here because I want to know the x values where that happens. So I'd subtract b from both sides. And then we'd divide both sides by 2a. And we'd end up with this little equation of x equals a negative b over 2a. Now, does that seem familiar at all? It should. In fact, I taught this earlier this year to my Algebra 2 students, as I do every year. You saw this back in Algebra 2 because that is the little formula that we gave you to memorize on how you find the x-coordinate of the vertex of a quadratic. Oh my god. Wait, what? Remember in a quadratic, if you have a general y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if you want to know where the vertex is, then... We go ahead and to find that vertex, we would actually just know that formula, x equals negative b over 2a, but notice at that point, the vertex is where your tangent is horizontal. And so we've actually just shown how did we get that formula that you memorized in algebra 2? You could actually just take the derivative of the original equation and set it equal to 0. So it's backwards. All right. So that's just some fun practice dealing with horizontal tangents. Today, though, we're going to be doing a new derivative rule. And we're going to start into that with this equation. Please, find the derivative of this equation. The, the exponent is a constant here, and so we can go ahead and use power rule like we normally do, but it's not just a number that we like can deal with as we normally would. So for power rule... Remember, we multiply by the exponent, and then we do x to the power of, and we take 1 away from the exponent, right? So, yeah, it's to the power of e minus 1. And that's power rule. And that's right. That's looking good. Now, this is x to the power of e, e being that irrational constant, kind of like pi, just different number. But what if we actually want to do this one? That's easy y equals e to the x. Now things are a little bit different. You'll notice this is not x to the power of a number. Therefore, you cannot use power rule here. You can't do x e to the x minus 1. Yeah. We cannot turn it into x e to the x minus 1. We cannot do that because our base is not x. Our base is e. And that changes things. Anytime it's a number to the power of x, the derivatives work out totally differently. And so I'm going to give you the rule here in a moment, but I want you to actually think back to some work you did earlier this year. You've been doing problems all along this year where I give you the original graphs, and then I ask you to match it up with the graphs of its derivative, oh, right? Well, the graph of v to the x, it's an exponential. There, the thing tried to jump a little bit as I was drawing it. There we go. Well, it jumped again. Close enough. It's all right. So that's what the graph of v to the x looks like. What would the derivative of that graph look like? This. Well, uh, here is our slope positive or negative? Positive. Is it very big or very small? It's small because it's fairly flat. Uh, how about here? Is our slope positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Is it fairly big or fairly small? Big. Fairly big. And so our derivative starts off very small positives, but then it gets very, very big over time, right? You'll notice those two graphs look pretty much the same. In fact, if I were better at drawing, we would find that they were exactly the same. e to the x is a very unique function. Of all the functions out there, e to the x is its own derivative. Please add this to your derivative rules notes. All right, so you got this into your notes now. 
Uh, we're going to see how to practice it and how it gets used in some other formats and some things like that. But one quick little note here. E the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, yes. This is unique, though, just for e to the x. If I were giving you the derivative of 2 to the x, it's not going to be 2 to the x. Uh, there will be, it'll actually be kind of close to it. There's going to be an extra little variation in there, but we'll worry about that later because it's more complicated. Oftentimes, we like starting with this one just because it's so simple and so easy to remember. And it's going to allow us to start practicing some other types of rules that come up along the way as well starting tomorrow. So now we go and we find the derivatives of functions involving e to the x, but that aren't just e to the x. So for f of x there, we have f of x equals 3 times e to the x. When I go to find the derivative, f prime of x, you notice it's a constant 3 times e to the x. Remember that with our constant rule, anytime you multiply something by a constant, it's just going to be the constant times the derivative of the function as well. So I know my answer is going to be 3 times the derivative of e to the x. Well, of course, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And so the derivative of 3 e to the x is 3 e to the x. Okay, what about g prime of x? Uh, the fact that that's a 0.5 out in front, is that going to change anything? No. No. It's still just a constant that's being multiplied by it. So I keep the constant, and then I do the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. Nice and easy, right? All right, last one, h prime of x. What does h prime of x equal here? Well, the derivative of e to the x, of course, is e to the x, but this is e to the power of 2. e squared isn't just e squared a number? Yes. yes What's the derivative of a constant? Uh, guys. Yep. Since e squared is just a constant, the derivative of e squared is just going to be 0. All right, so for finding this derivative, there's two different terms that we're subtracting, so we can go ahead and just find the derivative of each term. The first one is the cube root of x. Remember the cube root of x? That's just x to the power of one-third. So when I go to find the derivative of x to the one-third, that's going to give me one-third times x to the power of, now I do one-third minus one, so that's going to be negative two-thirds. And then minus stays minus, now I do the derivative of 5e e to the x. Of course, that's going to just be 5e e to the x. So even though we have mixed function types, because we're subtracting them, we can still do it. Tomorrow we add in multiplying and see what that does, because that will not be quite as straightforward. But for today, let's go ahead and finish this one out, because this one's not done. Because my original was given in radical form. It was simplified, so I need to simplify my answer too. I know, that's your favorite, right? So you should have actually gotten 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared minus 5e e to the x. So, of course, to find the horizontal tangent, that means we start by finding the derivative. So, you should have started by finding that the derivative equals e to the x minus 2. And then for the horizontal tangent, again, we set it equal to 0, so e to the x minus 2. Move the 2 over to the other side first, so 2 equals e to the power of x. And at this point, well, we start getting a little bit rusty, right? Because the x is in the exponent. Remember, any time the x is in the exponent, that's why logarithms exist. And so we have to change it into log form. Now, since it's e to the x, that means it's going to be a natural log. So we end up finding that x equals the natural log of 2. And yes, you can go ahead and just leave it in exact form like that. LN2 is fine. If you got it as a decimal, that'd be okay as well, but you don't have to. <laughs>